Hi, welcome back to The Shed for episode 18 of the Rickenbacker 620 12 string build. And in this episode, we're gonna start work on the scratch plates for the guitar. Okay, so it's time to make some pick guards for this guitar. And I say pick guards, plural, because there's two of them. I had a little bit of a flap. I'd ordered in some material to make these out of. And without really thinking about it, I ordered some three ply white, black, white material. And it was only when I kind of started to look what I was meant to be doing that I realized that in fact it should just be white. Now I'm not totally a slave to the kind of original but having looked at it I actually thought that the simplicity of the white would work better so I've decided that's what I'm going to go with. So I had to order some new stuff thankfully didn't take too long and it turned up in the post yesterday so we're good to go with this now. This won't go to waste. I'm pretty sure I'll find something to use this on before too much longer. Now the pick guard arrangements on this guitar is quite unusual. I've not really seen anything like it before. And if I get the drawing, I can kind of demonstrate what I mean by that. There's actually one pick guard, which is this larger one that has all the controls on it, but it extends underneath the smaller one. Technically, I suppose this is a control cover and this is the pit guard. And they're actually spaced off one another with some little plastic or rubber bobbins. Now I haven't got those yet. So there is only so far that I can go realistically with getting these made and put together, but we can get most of the work sorted out and done. Now I made these templates at the beginning of the project, but I didn't really completely finish them off because I was unsure whether or not these screw holes were gonna be in the right place. Now that I'm so far along on the project, I've checked those and everything's good. So first thing I'm gonna do is get these onto the drill press and just put these screw holes in position. But I'm only gonna do it on the template. I'm not actually gonna put them in the components until I have all of the screws and those little bobbins that I'll need to put it together properly. And that's just so that I'm absolutely certain I'm putting the right size holes in the right position, blah, blah, blah. So to the drill press. Okay, so with that done, it's now time to just get these onto the, the material, kind of roughly mark around them. Hopefully this pencil is gonna show up okay. And we can just get them to the bandsaw, get them quite roughly trimmed to shape. And then it's a case of just mounting them more firmly with some super glue and masking tape to these templates and getting them routed to their final shape. Okay, so there's those two kind of roughed out. So next up, it's very simply a case of just attaching these to the template and running the route around to get the exact shape that we want. Now this has thrown up something of a curveball for me because not having ever seen one of these things in the flesh and not really having much experience of them, the only way that I have of knowing what these pit guards look like is what's on the plan and as we can see, that's quite limited. It doesn't really say anything. And what I can see on pictures that I found on the internet. Now, 
what was concerning me was as these two overlap to a certain extent in places how do we go about any chamfering that there might be on them because obviously if that one sat just above the bigger one there wouldn't be any need to chamfer that section and also it'll look a little bit weird so i've done a little bit of digging around and i've, I've tried to find as much information as i can and it, it would appear that these aren't actually chamfered at all anywhere from the images that i've been able to find and get close up on it just looks like there's a very minimal kind of softening of the edge on them if anyone's got any access to one of these or just knows better let me know in the comments but for the time being i'm just literally going to get these routed out to shape and give them a little bit of a, a tickle over with some sandpaper just to soften that edge up if it turns out i'm wrong on this and there is a chamfer anywhere on these it'll be a very quick job just to drop them back onto the template and get that sorted out And because I don't want these kind of rattling all around the bench when I'm routing them, I'm just going to stick this little bit of wood in the vise. And I can, again, super glue and masking tape and just temporarily stick these into position until we've routed. Okay, so that's those two kind of routed to shape. Now, this is something I normally leave till the end of the project, but just for cleanup purposes, I'm gonna get it off now. Just remove the protective film. And I'm literally just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper. just clean those edges up a little bit which will also act to soften them 
Now so slightly. Okay, and that just leaves us to kind of just do a quick trial fit of that. I kind of marked out on the body where it's going to go. And I've just got some kind of quite thick washers just to simulate what this stood off effect is going to look like. And I think that looks jolly splendid. Quite happy with that. And I think adding those just gives a real kind of sense of what the finished guitar might actually look like. Obviously the positioning of this depends massively on where the pickups are going to sit because these two little cutouts there orient against the pickup rings, I believe. So we can't really get it into its final position just yet, but I think that's a, a huge step forward which only really leaves us one thing to consider at this stage. And that's what we're gonna do with this little bit, which of course is the truss rod cover. But of course, technically, I don't need a truss rod cover because I don't have adjustment to the truss rod at the headstock. And to be honest, I'm not sure I'd like it if I made one. Instead, what I think I will do is, I'm actually gonna veneer the front face of this. I've got some flamey maple veneer that I can do that. And I think I'm gonna also put a little logo running down the center of there. I'm not sure if the stock I've got of Mother of Pearl would enable me to put a big enough one on there to make it look kind of in proportion with the headstock, but it might be an interesting experiment to see if I could actually make some out of this purloid instead. So yeah, a little bit of food for thought there let me know what you think in the comments. So there's a couple of little steps taken forward. It might not have seemed like a huge amount of work, but it is important because until you get all of these little bits and pieces like the pit guard sorted out, you're kind of working with only half the jigsaw pieces. So now I'm starting to get a lot more of what needs to go on this guitar together. I'm starting to have a much better understanding of what it is I need to be doing to getting this thing moving forward a little bit quicker. So that's all good news. I think this is a really good time to leave this video here. So I'm gonna be back in a couple of days time. So as always, like if you've liked, subscribe if you haven't already done so, that really would help me out. And I'll see you in a few days time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.